Now this is very important that you pay attention. We talked about sanctification, very few sanctified. Now when the Grecians were murmuring because they was left out of the daily ministration, they wasn't getting their food, so Peter told them, he said, Seek you out seven men filled with the Holy Ghost, and they can take care of this matter. Now what if I told you today, I said, go out and find seven men filled with the Holy Ghost. You would look bum-fuzzled. You wouldn't know what to do. So you see, what does that mean? It means the church is over. There's no church left today. There's a few of us Holy Ghost people, but God gives us enough measure of the Holy Ghost to know Him, but He can't even manifest a Holy Ghost person today because if He did, you'd kill us all. <clears throat> and there's no Holy Ghost people much in the land today. There's very few, few people. So the church is dead. Without the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. What did Peter and the six Jews that were with him see at Cornelius' house? What made them accept the Gentiles? They said that God gave them the gift, just like he did us, so how can we refuse them? This was a real gift. The Holy Ghost can be seen. It's not like a natural thing, but uh, you can see the light. You can see the, and you can feel it. He's real. The Holy Ghost is God coming into these people. That's what Jesus died to buy for us. It connects us back to God. It is God in us. What did they see? It's a real thing. It's not just a cliche from a book that you get the same way you think you get saved by claiming a verse in the Bible. It's a real power of God. Now this is where our church started. On the day of Pentecost, there was a Russian mighty wind. And about 120 of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were speaking in languages from 15 to 18 nations under, under the sun in that time. Well, they thought they was drunk. You know, they thought, oh, man, these people's drunk. Because they hear them speaking in their own language. Something had happened to these people. What was this mighty Russian wind with cloven tongue that set upon these people? This is where our church starts. Now, without the Holy Ghost, you ain't none of His. And so... You see, if I get in, when I used to be trapped in all this religion, I'd be shouting in Baptist churches. They'd throw me out of there because the Holy Ghost would come upon me. And I'd get to shouting, and they didn't allow shouting and Holy Ghost people in their churches. If you get in a church today, you get to prophesy, or you get filled with the Holy Ghost, they chunk you out of there. So there's no church left today. This church was built upon the anointing, upon this electricity that flows in our body, and it's gone today. What exactly did Peter have when he said, Such as I have, give I thee to the lame man? The Holy Spirit in him told him to reach down to that man. When he reached down to that man, the Spirit flowed through him into that man's body like electricity. It's the real power of God. And he was healed by a real power of God living in him. The Holy Ghost is real. Peter had the Spirit flowing through him, not just a bunch of dead words about the Spirit. God is real. The Holy Ghost is real. He's not a cliche. Now here's your Bible worshipers. This was Paul before he got converted. He went to the high priest and got him some letters and said, if I find any in this way, now what way? How would Paul find a Christian? They didn't have no fingerprints, didn't have no photos of them. They didn't have the FBI to track them down in them days with some satellites and looking for them. All they had was just their faces shining and them prophesying. When Paul got converted, he couldn't even find the Christians. Barnabas had to take him over to them. They stayed separate. They stayed hid out. They was new creatures. They had life in them. And see, they lived right. This seed in you makes you live godly. It's Christ in you. So Paul couldn't find them. He said if he found any in this way, and he'd bring them in. Women and men, it'd make him no different. And they'd take them to Jerusalem bound because they had the Holy Ghost. And they'd do the same way today. They've chased me all over America and all over South America and Canada because I got the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Ghost has got me. And so without the Spirit of Christ, you see, Paul could have never found them people if hadn't had the Holy Ghost in them. Now you can find all kinds of devils in an insane asylum. Sometimes they put some of us in there, but we get to cast down all them devils and they kick us out of there. <laughs> so you see, you need the Holy Ghost today and Bible worshipers don't have it. 
Why did they call them Christians in Antioch? It's because they had Christ in them. They could see this light in their face. And they could hear it in their voices. They could feel it. They looked different than other people. When I became a first filled with the Holy Spirit, my brother looked down at me one day. He was taller than me. And he said, what happened to you? And you can see the light in a Christian's face. Now, I know today we have just a small portion measure of the Spirit because we live in terrible times, and if we had too much, they would kill us. But you can see a person if they have Christ in them. You can see it in their face. And you can see a devil. You've seen devils look at you before with that look. Well, that's the way Christ is. You can see if Christ is in a person also. The Holy Ghost is real. What people have today in them is a bunch of scriptures, Bible worshipers. That's all they have in them. Now here's Simon the sorcerer. Peter and John was down there in Samaria and they was laying hands on people and the Holy Ghost was coming up on them. And Simon seen this. And he offered them money. said, give me this power that whosoever I lay hands on. Well, you see, he offered money for something real. The Holy Ghost is something real. Even a sorcerer can see that. Now, Bible worshipers is dumber than this sorcerer. Do they look for the Holy Ghost in you? Nope. If you believe John 3, 16, whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Well, if you believe in him, you'll get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you Bible worshipers, you don't go look to see if people's got the Holy Ghost. You look to see if they conform to the doctrine of your Jehovah's Witness or Mormon or Baptist or Catholic or Pentecostal church. So you see Simon Saucer, a whole lot smarter than you Bible worshiping thugs. He said, give me this power. It's what you need. When some of the apostles prophesied there would be a falling away, well, what were they going to fall away from? There's so much religion in the world and so many people claim to be Christians with their Bibles and all their doctrines. Does it look like a falling away? They fell away from the Spirit. They fell away from the anointing, the Holy Ghost. If you obey God, He'll give the Spirit to them that love Him and obey Him. Well, people aren't obeying Him today. They don't want the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost sanctifies them and won't let them do their will after the flesh. So they resist the Holy Ghost. People don't have the Holy Ghost. They pretend that they do. They have a form of godliness and they deny the power. Well, the power is the Holy Ghost. It's not a cliche, it's a real power of God. Now this little sign here says, If what I say offends you, then it's probably the Holy Spirit talking to you. So pipe down and listen. When they took Stephen's out to stone him, his face shined like an angel. They couldn't resist the spirit or the wisdom that was in Stephen. Today people hate me, because I speak things God gives me. The Holy Ghost tells me these things. See, this is not my words. I'm telling you things that God taught me. And so if you refuse what I'm telling you and you don't seek the Holy Ghost, you try to be saved by some book that Constantine and King James give you, you're going to be in serious trouble. You need to pray until God fills you with the Holy Ghost. These hard times come on in this world. The only escape is not like these preppers out there digging them a hole in the ground or laying up some food and stuff. The only way to escape is with the Holy Ghost. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. If you'd have had the Holy Ghost in New York, you wouldn't have been there when that hurricane came. God would have delivered you. You want deliverance? <clears throat> then you listen to this country boy. I'm telling you the truth. You must have the Holy Ghost. Ask Jesus to fill you with the Holy Ghost.